he who is angry with his brother will be in danger of the judgment. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Our Lord is himself explaining the fifth commandment of God. Thou shalt not kill. No, it doesn't actually mean merely refraining from external actions and those of an extreme nature, but of a whole disposition of soul that can end up to that degree of wickedness. And one of the movements of soul that he is talking about is anger. When it is a disordered movement of the soul against people or things contrary to us, making us hate them, repel them with violence, take revenge. And this is indeed a vice our Lord is teaching us. Quite simply, when it is, its motivation is merely self-love, we are contradicted, we are hurt. Or when we use unlaw unlawful means, for example, name-calling. Or when it is against anyone who doesn't merit this, we go beyond due measure, perhaps. Yes, indeed, one may be liable to the judgment. It's not a vice when done from a zeal for justice to right wrongs. But there is much room for self-deception therein when the motive is rather for the good of the delinquent, then it is a movement of charity. So there's room for distinction and room for confusion. Of itself, though, he who is angry with his brother will, will be in danger of the judgment. And to be judged before the divine tribunal means to be condemned. We are dealing with something that scripture teaches, teaches us is of itself grave, serious. St. Paul, after all, will list anger amongst those sins which exclude from the kingdom of heaven. And only mortal sins do that. Already in the Old Testament, Anger and fury are both of them abominable, and the sinful man shall be subject to them. To come at last to the master himself, whosoever is angry with his brother shall be in danger of the judgment. Of course, to be grave, it means that one does wound in a serious way against fraternal charity, or our anger is the cause of grave wrongs and offends therefore against justice, even if that injustice, incidentally, is only in word. Whosoever shall say, thou fool, will be in danger of hell fire. Quite a tremendous saying from our Lord. But we need to understand, for after all, do we not see St. Paul in his epistle to the Galatians calling them fools? O oh, senseless, foolish Galatians! Or our Lord himself, the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, after his resurrection when he comes to them, O oh, foolish and slow of heart to believe all things that the prophets have said. It is not therefore always wrong to call somebody a fool. And yet it can be gravely serious. It is sinful to the degree that there is something disordered, something unwarranted. And if that disorder be serious, this is a serious sin. If that disorder be slight, the sin too is slight. 
and it can indeed be serious when uttered out of hatred as a sign of hatred, for example, or when it would gravely prejudice the victim in the eyes of others. For it is written, a good name is better than riches, and good favor is above silver and gold. We treasure more our reputation, our good name. If this is stolen from us, it is a greater loss than stealing our property, and therefore the sin is greater. It is not serious, of course, if it is in jest, or if it be true, but the word is spoken with too much vehemence or inopportunely, not considering circumstances of time and place. It is no sin if it is for the good of the one who is foolish, to bring him back to his senses. In other words, if the motive once again is charity, the good of the delinquent. But to return to anger, this one we have to watch out for, for it is easily out of control. Again, we read in scripture, an irascible man provoketh quarrels, and he that is easily stirred up to wrath shall be more prone to sin. And that is why it is ranked amongst the capital sins, meaning that it is a source of many others. We say and do things that otherwise we wouldn't, and we regret it when it is too late. Not only is there name-calling like thou fool, but accusations, it gives rise to accusations and quarrels, to fights and yes, even murder, to coldness and estrangement, to loathing and seeking revenge. It is a capital sin. We are to avoid it, therefore, the anger of man, after all, says St. James, worketh not to the justice of God. Even if, therefore, it is the justice of God and zeal for good that motivates our anger. It is really the weapon precisely that God would choose us to use. It is very rarely the weapon that he himself used when he was walking amongst us. We have to try our best to avoid it, and notably in families. And you fathers, says St. Paul, provoke not your children to anger. And what more provokes to anger than anger? For it is also written in the book of Proverbs, a harsh word stirreth up fury. The better to avoid this vice that is so very common. Let us cultivate the opposite virtue, which is that of meekness. Learn of me, for I am meek and humble of heart. Learn of our Lord, look at him. Notably, when he was suffering all sorts of outrages in his passion, how did he react? Blessed are the meek, blessed are the peacemakers. He teaches by word and example the Christian spirit, of course. To cultivate this meekness, we are to meditate upon this passion of our Lord. But more fundamentally, perhaps, we have to mortify our self-love, for this is the source of unholy anger. We should be ready to suffer any loss rather than the loss of our peace of soul. This is our Lord and his passion. He is master of his soul whatever befalls him from without. 
this mortifying of our self-love, this daily practice of biting our tongue, to speak only when we are calm. Yes, a mild answer breaketh wrath, but a harsh word stirreth up fury. This patience, this mildness, this meekness of the Sacred Heart was also, of course, that of his Holy Mother. How many outrages did she not suffer in her life? Did she ever lose her temper? Did she ever lose her peace of soul? Can you even imagine such a thing? We are to pray for this grace, especially with the sorrowful mysteries. We are praying our rosary to ask for those virtues that were hers, for the partaking in the graces that were hers. We want the spirit that was hers, which is the same as that of her divine son. Learn of me, for I am meek and humble of heart. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.